All right, this is Alonzo Bowden. I'm welcoming you to the Hand Built Podcast. I'm doing the intro because Alan is in no position to do it. He's a mess. He can't handle it. So we have Dutch and Vicky who have come all the way from the UK. From From London, the bike shed. Representing. Representing the bike shed. Yeah. And we have BT, also known as JT, (laughs) only for this spot. We have BT, who is a hilarious comic out of Indianapolis, also a MotoGP expert who is here for MotoGP weekend. I'm a comic who happens to know Alan, and I'm lucky enough to have been invited here. And Alan kind of, uh, he runs the whole thing. How could you be listening to this and not know who he is when it's his? Hand-built motorcycle show, revival cycles. Come on, haven't you been paying attention? Look it up. Here we are, the Hand-Built Podcast. We're going to have some fun. My first uh, time here, and and it's a very cool place. I like it. Everywhere you look, there's like some old bike or some bike under construction or something else going on. Or a pinball so it's a machine. Cool, cool spot. Or, or or a Japanese pinball machine, right? Like, well, yeah. There's, there's a little that. bit of there's a little bit of things. Uh, a lot there's there's uh, five of us in the room so that people can get a sense of that. There's a party going on downstairs. I'm sure you can hear that too. That's happened every year we do this, um, and uh, it's been a hell of a weekend. I'm really really tired but i'm two drinks into some japanese whiskey and i think it's gonna be okay now <laughs> <laughs> we can handle it we're yeah. gonna be fine yeah i'm 362 days away from handbelt show 2019 i'm there feeling go. pretty damn good uh we've got the folks from uh the bike shed here dutch and i just completely forgot vicky vicky, vicky the vicky. boss i'm sorry I she, used to, she's the real boss so so little big noise Little right. big noise. Yeah, big that noise? Is exactly right. <laughs> or big noise. Little, little big, big noise. Little big noise. Okay, yeah. I got it. Sorry. Um, uh, Dutch and Vicky from the bike shed in the UK came all the way to see me. Damn right. Well, Just you me. said if we came to see your show, you'd come to see our show. So we got on a plane. Right. right. Yeah. I mean, so that's, now, how, that's how we In a we few roll. weeks, I'm going to the UK, yep. apparently. Excellent. Uh, yes. <laughs> Any excuse to go s- s- experience some dreary, dreary yes. weather and some... <laughs> Some rain. It is great. rains yeah. every day. Every fucking day I've ever been to the UK. Yeah. It's coming. Except our show weekend. And <laughs> BT. BT. I yeah, know you can forget my and I'm the initials. I want to say JT because Justin Timberlake is you know I kind of got a man crush on. <laughs> Who doesn't? Do you too? All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. All right cool. Because you know he brings everybody. I mean, everybody likes Justin Timberlake. Black people like him. <laughs> everybody like no seriously like he's got the street cred everybody likes Justin Timberlake you don't like you Justin know, Timberlake you don't like life you know who doesn't like Justin Timberlake oh. my wife really she doesn't like him I'll play some JT and she's like yeah. why do you like this he, you know where he didn't do well with the Super Bowl no people, I, yeah, I heard I it didn't, didn't work it. no it really didn't, he tried to do too much he I'll tried be to do a little of his stuff he tried to do some Prince tribute this and it was like nah and then oh, he had on what he had like a camouflage blazer on or something, they were much. like, "No, you're not. You're not a hunter." Like he was trying to do the ten thousand lakes <laughs> yeah. thing. He yeah. Shotgun. yeah, he was trying to do the, you know, Min- <laughs> Minneapolis, <laughs> land, <laughs> Minnesota, <laughs> land of ten thousand lakes, and people were like, "Nah, JT." No, he just... was more Elmer Fudd, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was totally when you said that. I was totally thinking Elmer Fudd. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. So, was... so. I have to admit, I actually only know one album, and it was that 2020 <laughs> album. I'm not an old school JT fan, but I play it occasionally, and I and I'm convinced it's good. There's He's talented, no great. question. Yeah, no, there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, seriously, that, that summer summer love. I always, every time I hear that song, it reminds me of the girlfriend I really really loved, and who broke my heart every time I hear that song. So it's like, really, I always stop singing my track. Oh, yeah. I'm having a moment with you. Me. That's a but trigger, right? There. Yeah, it was great though. Was I great. think I'm gonna call you JT. I'm sorry. Do that, <laughs> so, JT, BT. Come on. So, <laughs> tell, so what do you do, BT? I'm a stand-up comic like Alonzo. He's one of my best friends. A comic. I look up to the guy, and we both well, bond over he's taller. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, noticed, you might look similar. Yeah. Yeah. He's taller. Yeah, I'm like yeah. a little brother. All right. So yeah, and, but and you do comedy, and yeah, when you're riding with motorcycles. Yeah, I mean, so and I don't know how it was when. Well, the funny thing was so. BT lived in LA for I don't know how many years and we didn't know each other rode like we both rode but we didn't know each other did it so right. we never rode together and I don't even know how we found out I just remember finding out you had a, one of those yellow and black jixers yes right yes. The yellow and black jixers, the one that changed the game I remember game. that yeah. yeah what year was this this had to be at what? least 2000 uh, Four. Yeah, something like At early two thousands. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and we find out we both rode, and I and I think anybody is like 
I come, I did a 180, like I've come back to my, I lived on the road for a while doing comedy, and so bikes were kind of pushed to the side while I was, you know, and all of a sudden, I just one time I just said, you know what, I want to go back to my first love, which was motorcycles. I, you know, I got in LA trying to get the career and everything, and then for some reason I go, you know what, man, I'm going to go back, but what did I love? And it was always motorcycles, and, and I used to wrestle, so, and I went back to that, and it's like, and I remember right at Jixer, it's my buddy's Jixer. I hadn't been in the bike in over at least 15 years, probably. Really? And I was like, oh, man, this thing's so powerful. And and when I was doing it, my other buddy who rode, he goes, uh, how long has he been riding? He goes, he hadn't. He goes, why did you have him ride my bike? He goes, because it's not mine. <laughs> <laughs> and I ended up, what do I care? I ended yeah. up buying that bike. I, I took a, a, a the, I'm not very bright, but for, I saw where I was going with it. I didn't know me. So I took the safety course first. And then I bought that bike the day after I passed the safety course. And while I was doing the safety course, the, the instructor was like, BT, I can honestly see you doing a wheelie in this class. Because I, I I loved it. Like, the first day we rode, like, you were you know, in do, it. doing yeah, the cones, yeah. like, I was smiling. It was raining. It was cold. But I had a smile on my face. And I was doing all of a sudden, there, I can see you doing a wheelie in this course. And I was like, yeah, I probably will. <laughs> so, so the day that I got the certificate, I went and bought my buddy's bike. He was scared of it. So he, he g gave me a great deal on it. And man, that's just, you know, it's like anything else, man. You reignited with that passion and it just stayed. Like, I mean, that's one of the few things in my life because I'm a Gemini, so everything's like, okay, I'm on to the next one. But with the bikes, it just stayed. And then, so, I found out Alonzo rode. It's like, okay. And then he goes, you know, and I was watching motorcycle race on TV and Alonzo was in. He goes, hey, man, GP's going to be in Indianapolis. And at the time, I lived in Indianapolis. And he goes, that yada, yada. And then that's just, it grew and grew and grew to the. To the uh, so that, that's that a lot today. of years, actually. Now. Yeah. We, oh, we've known each other at least twenty, probably. Yeah. Huh? Probably twenty years in the game, in the in the comedy game. That's a long time. And in time. the motorcycle, but but here's the thing: he's when it comes to MotoGP, more motorcycle racing of any sort, the man is a psycho. He is a living encyclopedia of oh. knowledge to the point we know Erta, the people who run the race, like they handle mm. the rules and and compliance and this and that. He'll start talking and asking them questions, and they're like, "We don't know. Like, <laughs> how do you, we don't, you how about, do you know right? this? We don't know." <laughs> no, today, today Henry, one of the guys, uh, he had a bet with one of the guys, and he goes, "Okay, Marquez hurt his chin. What racetrack was that?" And Erda, they asked me that. They go, "What racetrack was that?" I said, "That was Mugello." And the dude was like, "No, it wasn't." I go, "Yes, it was." And then they all said, and they looked at me, and go, "Yeah, it was." I guess like I, I know myself. That's all I do. I mean, I really? literally would stay to, to 4 o'clock in the morning and watch FP1. Who does that? Nobody. Uh, Who does wait, you do? See, okay, right. Oh, yeah, but you, know, you guys get it easy because <laughs> on the European rounds, you don't have to stay up late. You may wake up early. Yeah. In America, yeah. we, it's, it's 3 or 4 in the morning. Yeah. You're right. That's, that's, that's level. hardcore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, in Q, when, that, and when it's baby. QP, when it's qualifying day, yeah. it's the worst because they have, you know, FP3, then it goes FP. Four yeah. and then, then the two qualified. Yeah. So I'm literally going like, like this. I'm literally doing like this. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm shadow boxing going. I gotta watch it. I gotta watch it. I gotta see what's gonna happen. And I swear, as soon as FP2 is over, uh, I go and I yeah. literally just gone and I'm out. But I literally go okay, okay, and, and really, it all the yeah. I, you gotta I have it live. You can't just watch it later. I have text. Yeah, I have text to prove it. I have text at 5:30 a.m. telling up. me who's on the grid. In Moto 2, and I'm like, yeah, I, I don't I care. I don't give a shit. I was yeah, sleeping. I I, yeah. They'll still, hey, guess yeah. what? They'll still be on the grid tomorrow. <laughs> There's a lot of syllables in that name, but I don't even care. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, vowels. I'm sorry, yeah. vowels yeah. is what I meant. Yeah. <laughs> Both, really. Yeah. Yeah. That's and that's he's fun. little, yeah. and he's not Alonzo's size. No. Oh, so speaking of, speaking but that's of, cool. Now you've got a woman, kindred spirits. Oh, right. So yeah, we yeah. can text, you can text each her other, about babe. it. I'm on that. <laughs> well, what's okay. that? Oh, what's that? Uh, let's do it. Yeah, like I'm oh, all did, over that. Can you believe he did that shit? Exactly. Can you believe he did that? Oh. <laughs> he should be penalized. I know. The Danes was. Marquez lost three places. I mean, he, he messed with Vinales. That wasn't a good idea. Was it Vinales? Yeah, it was Vinales. Yeah, I mean, well, but the thing is, I thought it was. I thought it was three. Three rows. But you just yeah. three, places. three places. He's actually he's actually in a better place almost. Exactly. Almost because on a start, on a start, you're only on the second row and you're on the outside behind. It, it, it's a drag and race. Next to yeah. Rossi. Next to Rossi. I mean, there's no. a whole bunch of stuff. Going Rossi on there. was in the middle between two people he hate. It was Lorenzo. Yeah. Lorenzo <laughs> left to him. Marquez on the right. It's like your ex-wife and your other ex-wife. Yeah, that yeah. was a Rossi hate sandwich right there. Yeah. That was horrible. Yeah. I, I took a photo. I have no of idea. You feel you guys the are, angst. You, re you realize I follow Moto GP and you're ruining it for me. <laughs> you're ruining. I had. Full passes, all that VIP paddock grid, the whole deal. I couldn't go because the show today. I'll tell you who's going to ruin MotoGP for you. Have you ever heard of Neil Spalding? 
Like yes. he's this uber geeky presenter guy. Yeah, we should hook to, you up, babe. Yeah, he used to be. Um, he used to do the the MotoGP. Was it for BT Sport or was it before? No, it was BT. before. Yeah, I think so it was before. He actually. is this technician, and he will tell you about contra rotating cranks and yeah. how that affects the way Hondas versus Yamahas yeah. used to go around corners, like yeah. two years ago. And he he'll show you the pictures of how they corner differently and how they hit the apex differently. That's beautiful. You will never look He's at a, a MotoGP dude. the same again that because he can explain everything. The ma- the oh. matrix he behind is the deal. Yeah, a mega yeah. geek. The only thing that's kind of weird is he doesn't have a human passion for why somebody's better. Because because he was telling us all this technical stuff, and I'm like, yeah, but Rossi's the greatest of all time, right? Because he's he's the sportsman. He's the hero. He's the character. He's he's the embodiment of motorcycle racing. And he was like, yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter because he's just a te- he's just a geek. Yeah, he just so cares to him, about the machine. To him, it's the machine yeah. the and numbers, the rider the is data. just the rider's just a part that you put on top yeah, of the no machine. He's got no heroes. He's a jockey. But yeah, you need yeah, to yeah. follow this guy, and he's written an amazing book. What's it called? It's called MotoGP. You need. I think his I saw that. Book. Yes, you I saw it. that. Seriously. But he's but he's Buy like. It. What Dylan Gray was last year with the tires. When Dylan Gray was on MotoGP.com yeah. and they would go down, it, the greatest example of how great Dylan was, they were in Argentina, I think in 2015, which when the rivalry with Rossi and Marquez kind of started, was mm-hmm. when he goes, when he goes, Marquez tires should start to fall off by seven laps from the end. Because Marquez had like a three second gap. He was, he was almost doing what he did at Dakota. Yeah. And then, and it was like clockwork. Boom! Rossi start yeah. catching him. Yeah. I mean, Dylan called that to the T, yeah. and that's when you know uh, he when Marquez came from the inside, he hit Rossi, and then Rossi you could tell it pissed Rossi off because Rossi crossed back over. And that was on purpose. Yeah. He crossed back over and he yeah. re- and he crashed yeah. Marquez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Dylan called that yeah. to the T. When it came to tires, his knowledge was. I mean, and so yeah, it's just like that guy you said, Neil Spalding. It's just like him with the tire. Dylan Gray was. He's incredible. the man in the background on the commentary who's following the data. Yes. He'll say when Marquez goes in to change tires first, and he'll say, yeah, but look, he's lapping a second and a half faster than everybody. He's 18 seconds behind, and there's 17 laps to go. So what's going to happen? He's going to win. And yeah. you're going to yeah. go, Sh- Christ, yeah. this is... It's like, called this engineering is a- yeah. math. It's, it's oh. amazing. It's all math. Yeah. But also love the human aspect. It's almost in comparison like like music. Like, Joe Satriani was a great guitarist. It was technical. It was great. You didn't feel him. Stevie Ray Vaughan, you felt Felt. So yeah. it's like apples and oranges, you know. What we're, exactly. we're in Austin. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm good friends with Chris Layton, who is was the drummer in Double Trouble. Mm-hmm. He's a motorcycle guy. You, you like this, That's right? He's good. looking. He's after Norton right now, actually. He's bucking the crap out of me about a fucking Norton. <laughs> in fact, <laughs> every Norton he sees, like, should I get this? Should I get that? Um, and I've learned a little bit more about about Stevie because of because of uh, Chris Layton, and. And hearing about what they what they went through and how he changed and through drugs. Sorry, I've totally just shifted the whole conversation, <laughs> yeah. right? But I was a Joe Satriani fan too, yeah, because I played guitar a little bit. And the difference between those two, I was wanting to be Joe Satriani and not Stevie Ray Vaughan. Of course, now I'd way rather have been Stevie Ray Vaughan. It's, it's just a feeling. I mean, it's there's like, an like, art to it. Yeah, like but, but that's the part. Feeling. That's the part you can't learn. Exactly. You know, you can yeah. no matter how much you practice. Hundred percent. The the feel is what you can't so, learn. So now I sound like I got a whole like book in front of me. So is who's who's the artist? Marquez, Rossi, Ooh, okay. Rossi. So, so here's right? the Spalding right? like, thing. Like I had like I have notes for this, but yeah. I don't. Yeah. Uh, well, what? Spalding's got a thing as there are legends, and there are what is it? Geniuses. Yeah. So Rossi's the legend. Yeah. Marquez is the genius. So and he says the other genius was uh, Freddie Spencer. Okay. Oh, um, Freddie was yeah. incredible. See, so I he said there are some people that can ride around any problem, yeah. and whatever bike you give them, they are just not afraid, and they will just rinse it. Hold on. It. So, you may not know this, but I'm really close with Kevin Schwantz. Mm. We've become mm-hmm. close friends. He comes. In fact, the fact that he's not here is, means he's tired. I know. I know him that mm. well. He's tired. He couldn't come. Um, what do you think of Schwantz? I'd say he's in the genius level. I mean, because he just had pure. Raw I want to know what he thinks. Kevin Schwantz. I'm with him. Yeah. I mean, seriously. He was See, a guy I who think, could ride around any a, bike. I think a guy like Marquez builds on what Rossi did. Because you got to remember, he grew up watching Rossi, 100%. right? Yeah, he yeah. learned yeah, yeah. He learned what yeah, Rossi yeah, no, did. I've seen that yes. photo. And then yeah, yeah. he used that and said, okay, now I'm going to go yeah. to the next level. You know, it, it, it's, like, it's like going back 
to, to Kenny Roberts to Freddie Spencer, yeah, right? You yeah. look at Kenny Roberts, and Freddie Spencer was a kid, and when Kenny it was when Kenny Roberts' knee hit the track, everybody's like, "Oh my God, what what's he yeah, doing?" What's he right? Doing? What's, what's, <laughs> what's, what's, what's he he, what the hell? <laughs> right? And then and then everybody <laughs> learned that, and Freddie Spencer came up with that, and Freddie Spencer came up with the dirt tracking, yeah, yeah. right? And then Freddie Spencer took it to the next level, and you can see that you see that with athletes in in any sport. There's one. There's the guy who is the the legend, yeah. who's the great one, and then somebody somebody figures out how to build on that. Somebody takes, okay, I'm gonna take to everything you level. did, yeah. and I'm gonna take it to the next level. And I really think that was that's where Marquez Definitely. is with Rossi, it, and because initially before the rivalry, it was like Rossi blessed Marquez. It 100%. was like Rossi yep. was like telling, like basically telling the world, like, yeah, this kid, this is next. This like. He's gonna take it over, and then then the the rivalry started. Like when he did the pass at Laguna, yeah. When he did the pass to Rossi at Laguna, Rossi laughed about it. Rossi was like, "Yeah, well, I know where you learned that one." Yeah, Yeah. 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 looks familiar, right? Yeah, absolutely. But where where Rossi becomes the legend is he was the kingmaker because the kingmaker is the guy who who actually makes the decision. So when Rossi broke his leg. And Lorenzo won the champion that yeah. championship that year, and everyone was like, "Ah, oh, Lorenzo only won the championship because Rossi broke his leg." And Rossi was the guy that said, "No, Lorenzo earned it." Mm-hmm. And so all of a sudden, he's handing Lorenzo the people's championship, yeah. but he's the endorser. Yeah, that he makes him the king. Himself. Well, he's, he's, the he's always going to be the people's champion. So, I mean, you all yeah. you have to do is go to any race yeah. and look yeah. in the stands. It's all yellow. It's yellow. What do you, what yeah. do you see? I you was know? there and, today. Yeah. And he's the guy that people who don't know racing know his name right mm. just like michael jordan like you didn't have to know anything about basketball to know the name michael yeah. jordan 100%. and people who don't know racing not maybe not here in the u.s but definitely around the world they know who rossi is yeah. so this this reminds me a bit so so what i was going to get towards with the schwantz thing is i've gone to schwantz's house and watched gp with him you know just this past year and I asked the dumb question that I feel like he's been asked a million times, which is how in the hell did you get through this? I've ridden with him at Coda, right? And, and enjoyed trying to keep up with him on whatever bike it was <laughs> and seeing his line, which was totally different from what I was trying to come through with. Um, and I said, how did you how did you get through this? And he's like, it's easy, man. I don't get it. I don't, I don't get it. You just break last. <laughs> right? We, and, and what he meant was... <laughs> Whatever that guy, you just wait till after he breaks, and then you, then break, you break, and yeah. you might crash. <laughs> you might crash, but you're gonna pass yeah. if you don't crash. Yeah. Right. And, and he said this to me. And I'm sitting there in his living room, and I'm going, "He's fucking serious. Yeah. <laughs> he is complete. He is not fucking with me." Was, so when you say genius, it's a different kind of genius. And yeah, what I was gonna directly compare is I've hung out with Wayne a bit. Wayne Rainey. Wayne Rainey. For you guys that don't know. <laughs> This, this was a pretty significant rivalry in MotoGP, yeah. right? And and it was exactly the same. There was the studying guy, which yeah. was Wayne, and then there was Kevin, who was just, I don't know. Just fucking, break glass. Just break glass, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and it's what I love about him. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, he he wants to hang out with his black lab, mm-hmm. to, uh, who, Tank, who I know he's going to listen to this, and he'll know that. He hangs out with his black lab, and he goes hunting. And he, he told we were in Vegas together a couple months ago for the auctions, and he was telling me that... Uh, how quickly he went to MotoGP. It was like he got on a, his parents owned a Yamaha dealership in Houston. He got on a bike, entered a race, he won that race, he won like five races, jumped a class, and then went to MotoGP. Whoa. Two classes. Yeah. That was like, and he was in MotoGP because he just wasn't afraid to That's break class. He was going to break class. Yeah. Like, still incredible. <laughs> right. What yeah. I think is funny. In like two was, years. Was how people fell for the April Fool's joke that he was going to ride Moto 2. He's going to be teammates with Joe Roberts. And Kevin <laughs> when did that happen? Oh, how old he is. You didn't hear about this joke? No, no, it was April no, Fool's no. joke like, yeah, Kevin Schwartz come back to Moto GP. No, he's, he's, he's racing he's, Moto 2. He's going to be teammates with Joe Roberts, the only American in, you know, in the yeah. series. Yeah. And, and people 50. fell for like, man, Schwartz, I mean, they really were like, Schwartz is back and man, that, it made my stomach hurt that people fell for like, Kevin Schwartz really gonna ride, really? Do that? <laughs> yeah, they, they wanted a wild card. <laughs> Kevin Schwartz really? wild card in G, and people fell for it. Dude, he, he, so, so, did you see that BMW we built? Yes, you did, you did. All right. Okay, sorry. Okay, I don't know what happened. I got it. All right. Um, 
the 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 BMW S one thousand we built yeah. is to endurance mm-hmm. race with, endurance race with Schwanz, Lau Lovett, and then me and our shop manager who's a racer. We were gonna intending to race all this, and it's so hard to put that together because I am certain that Kevin Schwantz is gonna crash my bike. <laughs> <laughs> I tease him constantly. You're gonna crash it, and then we're all gonna be done. You'll be the fastest guy. You'll set the fastest lap, and then you're gonna go down. It's all gonna be over. But all this beautiful aluminum bodywork we built in this bike because he's gonna find the end. So true story. We we got this bike from BMW because I after I did, I did a track day out there, I said. We have to have this bike. I want to do a custom S1000RR, yeah. 200 horsepower. All that technology was so good. And uh, we we got, I did maybe 10 miles on it myself because I was afraid to ride this thing on the street. I, I have no self-control. Schwantz takes it, puts the other 500 miles on it that you need to get to the break-in point. So they set it from the factory with 150 horsepower, mm. which isn't enough. So Schwantz texts me. They go to uh, Texas World Speedway into a track day, Chris and Schwantz. 147 in the back straight, it's all I could get out of it, right? This, it won't go any faster. 147, it's bullshit. <laughs> then he takes the bike, and he's riding around town, and he texts me the day after he got to 501 miles. He goes, that's bullshit, that 501 miles thing. I was like, what do you mean? He goes, I was at, I was at 499, full fucking throttle, and it got to 500, and nothing happened. <laughs> because he didn't realize what it meant was you get to 500 miles and you take it back to the right, dealer. Right, take it in, they do the first <laughs> service. You. The oh, true story, dude. Oh. It's like nothing happened when I got to 500. Well, I thought it was gonna, I was gonna get 50 horsepower when I got there. Brilliant. Right. That's right. a writer. They should Kevin change it so that's exactly how it. Yeah, goes. yeah, yes. exactly. I mean, come that's on. like a gift. That, right there. that is exactly what they should do. That's kind of running it wasn't bike. true, but it's totally yeah, true. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Really? That's yeah. a great but that's story. truly a racer, right? Like, yeah. I don't know how it works. Just yeah. make it go faster. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> how, I don't care just, how it works. Make it go faster. Yeah, yeah. Just no, do no, it. No, no, Kevin is not technical. Yeah. He, he <laughs> is like purely that. visceral. Yeah. Purely mm-hmm. visceral. Which is what you need sometimes. I, I feel that. That, that. That shit cracked me up. I couldn't stop it. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I kind of wish it wasn't true, but it's totally true. Anyway, sorry. So tell me more. I'm, I'm actually interested in hearing because I don't really, I don't really follow it as closely as I once did as a kid. The Marquez well, Rossi thing. I'm aware, but yeah. I, I don't read I mean, the articles. I, I watch the race. I don't follow it the way he does. I'll t- I will tell you my best MotoGP moment because it was here at Coda. I was hanging out in the A Stars tent watching the race with Ben Spees. Oh God! And oh. so Ben is is the, we were watching Moto Two. And he's kind of talking me through a lap and what they're thinking about and what they do. Right, and, yeah. and so I asked him, what's turn one like, right? Because turn one, you're doing, you know, 200 miles an hour into a 35 mile. And he's like, well, he said, when you're in the front, all you're thinking about is like that no one takes you out from behind. You know, he's because he says, because you're braking so hard. And he says, yeah. you know, like when you brake so hard, the tire comes off the rim. You yep. know what that? And I'm like. No, Ben, I don't know what that's like. Like, I haven't done, and he actually did that in, in a world superbike race in South Africa. He breaks, it's so, and it's like, no, nah, I haven't done that. But, but keep talking. Because yeah. these are great stories. Next when time. when Next I time. lie about what I did, I want to be accurate. But, <laughs> but it, it's, it's fun. It's like anything when you listen to somebody who's a master of it. Yeah. And you like what they're thinking, or what they and he, and it's it's so far ahead of what you're thinking about, you know, yeah. as far as as picking a line and like you said, breaking last, getting on the power, and um, and he's I'd say he's more the technical genius type. I I don't think he's the feeling type. I think Ben has it figured out. Like he's he has a, a strategy yeah. Yeah. Yeah, through yeah. the whole race, and he knows exactly what he's going to do and what the bike's going to do. But it was fun to listen to him talk about what it's like battling in the middle of the pack and and just work you know yeah riding the bike to the uh because you know you know what the difference is with them when something is wrong it's the bike you know what i mean like like yeah. with us like yeah. well, i'll speak for myself yeah like with me i'm not pushing the bike to the it's limit me. so if there's yeah. a problem i'm gonna go with it's me yeah but when they have a problem it's the bike and they know what it is yeah. on the bike because they're not know. just next level they're like seven levels ahead. yeah they're, so, they're they're operating on it on it just a different level so and I, yeah i got to do the track day with bmw again recently when we finished the aluminum bodywork on that bike and it was great and 
the new model came out and relatively nothing had changed. So we took our bike out there, but they put me on the HP4 race. Right. Which you know this bike? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it is the version of that bike, but it weighs 80 pounds less, yeah. maybe more. All carbon fiber frame. Rocket. Ooh. Rocket with an extra 30, 40 horsepower. It's carbon fiber, carbon fiber, right? Yeah, yeah, all of it. And I'm a not good. I was gonna use. I am not good. I'm 200 pounds of, of awkward, right? You know, like I, I, I'm already that S1000 RR. I'm I'm getting 170 in the back straight and just can't fucking believe it when I hit the brakes and it, and I get through the back straight mm. and the, into the, to turn 16, 17, 15, 16, 17, and they take me out and they go. They're like. I could tell they're like, "Oh, this guy's got some PR swing." Is essentially why they're going to put me on this. Yeah, I think it's a hundred thousand dollar motorcycle. I think you can do a four hundred miles on it before you have mm-hmm. to, or maybe it's eight hundred miles before you have to do a motor rebuild. Like it's that precise of a machine. They're going to stick my butt on it <laughs> because because there's going to be an Instagram shot or some right. shit, right? <laughs> so I'm like, I'm, I'll take it. I don't care, right? I want to ride this bike. So I get out there and instantly, so they want they take me with an instructor. Not they're not going to just let me free. And he's in front of me. And he says, okay, so it's in uh, wet mode now. Once we get to lap two, your tires will be warm enough. Hit the green button three times or whatever the hell it was mm. and say abracadabra. And this shit was going to go to dry <laughs> mode. And I was going to go to the next level. And if we get good at that next level, <laughs> right on the next lap, true story, dude. It, you hit it again, and it'll go to the third mode. I see what's and coming. I'm, right? What's and coming. I'm like, all right, cool. We get through that first lap, and I'm like, Immediately, everything's just easier. The bike feels like it's it's part yeah, of the me. The bike's made and, to do and, it. And I'm having trouble keeping up with the instructor, right? And and then we get through, and I'm doing a 180 or whatever the hell it was in the back straight. I, I can't see the speedo on this bike because the speedo doesn't matter. It's all tacked. And I know I'm, I'm carrying a lot more speed. And then we get to that second lap, and we get to the back, the back turn before you get to the, come to the straight. And he taps on the fairing, which was my signal to tap this button. And, and I launch it through second third fourth wheelies all the way down like i have no idea how fast i'm going and and i'm like oh man dry mode is so much better and then i realized it never shifted modes it was, it was just me it was just me being willing to give it the shit right? and, then, and in my head by the time i got to the end of the straight and it and i didn't crash i was like fuck it i'm leaving it in this this is fun yeah, for yeah. Me. this is good and we did like six or seven more laps and and I'm completely spent and tired because holding, you know, I used to weigh 140 pounds and be this height, and now I'm 200. And to hold yourself on a bike at that speed, mm. it takes. I'm, if you I was your muscles, fit. dude, it yeah. might be okay. But I don't have the stamina. No, I don't have and the strength. it's, it's yeah. a physical. No, that that's yeah. why they're jockeys. Like oh, there's a reason. God. Look at Danny Pedrosa. That they're jockeys. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I call yeah. him sixth grade Danny because he's like an average sixth grade. Yeah. <laughs> I do I call him sixth grade Danny. <laughs> Seriously, man, he's so he's that little. Yeah, no, no, like, yeah. Honestly, Marquez is like yeah. this tall. Yeah. Don't they have to, like when they when they do the you know when they're getting ready to start like. Put he got, a he's step on his tippy toes. Right, they got one toe on the ground. Yeah, yeah. The bike he's on the tippy toes. Put some blocks up for him. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think he could street ride a bike yeah. because he would tip over. I mean, there's no way. To work. They put him on a grom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he's got a grom with his name yeah. on it. The super grom, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. He needs centrifugal force over a hundred to keep it upright. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But what he did today was incredible. With that broken don't tell wrist. Me. God damn it! Yeah. I don't want to hear. Oh, he man. doesn't know. Man, you can't. Okay, oh, okay, no. okay. I heard Marquez. Yeah. One, but I already knew he won before it started. Let me tell you something. I was in both. I was in both press conferences. I don't want to brag. I was in both press conferences, <laughs> and when that, you know, when I, and I, even I didn't know at the time. I know they were talking about should he be sanctioned for being on Marquez. I mean, uh, uh, Vinales's line. And so I like to watch that the, the body language and everything about it. But you know, they can they can say what they want to say, but you can tell by the body language. And man, the way Marquez, they were like, Mark, you've been penalized. You, you know, you got to go back grid spots. It has to make you feel. And, you know, Marquez always says the right thing, but, man, he has some vitriol and a little bite. So he goes, you know what? Still got the watch. And I still got 25 points counting toward the BMW win for most, for most polls in the season. He said it. Not as snarky as that, but it was a kind of like, I, yeah, you think I care? I still yeah. got the watch. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. the record watch. stands, right? Yeah. Yeah. He still gets the pole position record. Right. Yeah, still, yeah. Even yeah. He and he said penalty. it like that, and I was like, So he's like, oh, I don't, basically yeah. saying, I don't give a shit. And that's what he said. Yeah. Basically, yeah. What he said. And, and then I watched mm-hmm. Vinales. Vinales was kind of like, you know, Vinales was real cool, but he tells his body language was like, yeah, I'm, I'm sick of this. 
know, you're like, <laughs> well, you know, fuck this Spaniard. It's yeah. frustrating because yeah, yeah, yeah. you know he's better than you. You know, you know he's better. He knows he's better, and you know he's better. It's a, you know and what? that's that's frustrating. I don't know if he's if he's better because honestly. When Vinales get, and they they haven't had the duel that I've wanted them to have. When Vinales started off, you know, two and zero last year. He 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 won the first two of the season. He won Qatar, Argentina, and then so I was, I was looking for the big duel here, and it never you know it never materialized because Vinales washed out last year, and it, and for some reason it never materialized last year. But I'm still waiting on that duel because Vinales yeah. nobody knows how something. good he is. Like yeah. I said, the best race ever was 2009 Rossi Lorenzo in Catalonia. Rossi made that pass oh, and no yeah. one ever oh. saw it coming. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I nearly yeah. died. The yeah. second best race ever was the Moto 3 Championship with Vinales, Renz, and God bless his soul, Louis Salam, and, uh, and Miguel. Al- no, Miguel Al- it was Louis Salam. And so Salam washed out, but it was Renz, Vinales, Renz, Vinales, the last lap. And the move and Yalis made on him, that was, I mean, it still makes the back of my hair stand up. And I go, this dude knows how to win. And considering the fact he was literally out of the championship because he, he, he and his team weren't getting along. So he flew home. And I guess either the manager said, hey, I think you better get here because the contract says this. So he flew his ass back. He needs to come like, he's, back. Like, he's like a 90 year old hothead. So he had to come back. And here he had it. Back and it was like he was out of the championship, and for some reason, in the flyaway, people don't know how great the flyaways really make a championship. It, it, it's broken down in three places the first three races of the year, which kind of you kind of salvage your points. If those three tracks aren't to your liking, you just want to get some points. And then, like Rossi said last year, here the European it, that's the when the championship starts to the European rounds, mm-hmm. but no one mentions the fact that the flyaways really make the difference because you got to fly from Malaysia to, 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 to Australia to, to, to Valencia. I mean. The, the flyaways are what makes yeah. it. And so when Vinales did what he did, he was out of it. And then all of a sudden, Motegi, he pulls something out of his ass. He's back in the championship. And then he goes to Australia and did what he did. And then to bring it back when they went to Valencia. I mean, that was, that was incredible. <laughs> That's all you want. I'm that was that. incredible. Yeah. I, I mean, honestly, that's when I said, this kid knows how yeah. to win. Yeah. That, I mean, watch his crew and, his, and Pat, know what they went through. And they were at odds with each other in the win like that. Man, you watch when Vinales gets that bike. He said it today during the press conference. He goes, we're coming. I like the way the bike's coming on. And they let him. Vinales is going old school. He's taking away the electronics. He wants to go by feel. He's taking away some of the electronics oh. from the bike is what he's doing. So he's kind of going old school with it. And he kind of said it, not snarky, but he kind of said, he go, I like the way we're going. And he said it with, with, with a little confidence. So when they get over to the European rounds, we're going to see what's going to happen. You know, I think that's going to be a whole, another, whole other kick. Now you know why he can't get a date. <laughs> because that that is this Don't this worry, is honey, I'm this is knowledge this is knowledge gained no this is day. knowledge gained between two and five a.m. Okay, and this between is why Vicky yeah. and JT. Yeah. 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 Between JT yes. and Vicky, a lot of monster energy. You're in trouble. You're in trouble. Dutch hasn't said anything in twenty minutes. Dutch is like, I got. So that was the perfect. What I like about that was that was my Leno moment. Whenever. I'm talking Leno, I can tell he kind of fades out and he's like, I got a joke for this. When he's done, yeah. I'm going to drop, drop it that. on him. So, <laughs> so that's, that's a perfect segue into what I was about to say, which is competition. Who's the artist and who's the scientist as a comedian between the two of you? Oh, definitely. He's, 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 the, the, uh, he's the everything. With the way Alonzo breaks it down. The simplicity, but the complexity of the simplicity. I was going to say, joke. that's what I feel yeah. about when I've heard your stuff. Oh, Because my. I was after I met you, that started listening to right. what you do. I, You yeah. know, I don't know. I don't, you don't think of just like, it's like you making a bike, right? You don't sit there. I think in any creative um, venture, you don't think about the creative process. You just do it. Absolutely. You know, because when people ask me like, how do I make something funny? It's like, well, if it's funny to me, then it's funny, you know? Right, yeah. And the hardest thing to do is to get hired to do something specific, right? Oh, right, so, if you were so, doing a host show like Oscars or some right. shit. And right, and then you yeah. have to write jokes. Yeah. That That's hard because then you're just looking for something to spark it and then like, okay, oh, this is funny and now I can write this and then it'll grow from there. But, but as far as just organically being funny, I love going on stage not knowing what I'm going to talk about because then it's just you know my favorite I've always said my favorite joke is something that's funny in the moment right there and it'll never be funny yeah. again because it just in yeah, that in moment, moment right, it was yeah. the perfect yes. you pull it out. joke or the yeah. perfect line and, timely uh, to put yeah, it mildly yeah, yeah it yeah, just yeah. in the mo- you can and they, but, they know it's in is, the moment I I'm considered I'm considered the science side because I'm a writer 
because right. I love writing You're jokes. Contemplating so, all that so ahead of time. I think that's what people say. Like that's the compliment I get. Like, man, you can write a joke, and you know. So I take that. So you're as you're a polishing high compliment. the same way you polish motorcycles. You're yeah, polishing your jokes and getting them yeah. just right. But but, but I don't polish. <laughs> well, no, I don't stick with something long enough to polish it because I love topical. So okay. so in order to polish something, you got to have a bit. Of, but you know, say you had a bit about, uh, like I had a bit about riding my motorcycle cross country, right? And if I kept doing that bit for six months, then it would be a polished 10 minutes on it. But it's like, well, that only struck me as funny for two months. And then I was like, I got to talk about something else. Because it doesn't feel Whereas natural. Right. Other yeah, yeah. comics will stick with a bit. And in the course of a year, you'll see like you'll see the transformation and be like, wow, that's a, that's become amazing. Yeah. So, yeah, I I, um, I get kind of bored. But and so. Well, that's a perfect example. Yeah. Like, like oh, the other night, say, yeah. you had a joke I've been doing. About, you did it last night about how uh, you know you know you get older when you fall and nobody yeah. laughs. And I had the same joke, but you took it. You went this far where my ends here, and I was watching. Okay, I had the same joke. See where he's gonna take it. I was like, this son of a bitch. Tell me, tell <laughs> me, what's what's the joke? Joke? tell me. I want to hear the joke. So well, and and this came from we were in we were on a tour through Canada. And somebody fell down, and and I was just talking about how, so you can tell how how old somebody is, because like in your twenties, right, when you fall down, you just pop back up, yeah, right, yeah. and you're only nobody concerned, did. did I look cool, yeah. right? You just look around if it, nobody saw me, right? Nobody, all right, you look around, right? Then, yeah. All right, we're good, we're good. Yeah, then, yeah. then if you're in your thirties, when you fall down in your thirties, now you got to act like it didn't hurt, yes, and right? You know it hurt. Yeah. You're gonna go home. You're gonna get some some. Tylenol and some ice, but you just kind of walk it off, you know, this and that. And then, oh, like, when you hit your 40s and your 50s, now when you fall, people don't let you get up. The minute you hit the ground, no, stay down. Stay no, down, you're down. not okay. <laughs> you, I, no, you fell. You need to stay down, check Hospital yourself, breathe, breathe. <laughs> breathe. Yeah, yeah breathe, you always breathe. Just, breathe, just breathe. Just breathe if you want a cup of tea with some then, sugar. The best. <laughs> then when you hit 60, now when you fall, they just call 911. They just don't even mess around. Just call 911. He fell. Like he's still down. Just get over here. Right? Then, if you're lucky and you get old and you hit 80 and you fall, people just fly in from out of state. They just, <laughs> we, we heard you fell. Right. We got here, right. we got here as quick as we could. No, we heard you fell. We're here. Did you come in? I came in from out of state. He fell. You know? yeah, it's done. Yeah. It's done. I'm going to miss you. I'm going to miss you. Yeah, My yeah. joke ends there. And that's why I was like, God. You know what that's I mean? that's like, good. Yeah, yeah. 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 So it, and that just grew. That grew over time from the initial. Because the first thing is when you fall in your twenties, you just pop up, and then it's like, yeah. But as you, you know, so those jokes change. Like you go on stage, and just little lines and nuance comes in, and you. It's it, again. I it, I don't know your exact process for building a bike, but that's how it, it goes. I, I'll have a joke, and then I'll just think of lines, and I'll add this, and I'll turn. You know. So. I've embraced the fact that I'm a creative, but it took me 35 years. And when people, so my dad, I was a, I was an artist and I drew things and I wanted to be an architect. Uh, and then I realized that to be a successful architect, that was like wanting to be famous. And I realized that was fucking absurd. No offense. <laughs> <laughs> wanting to be famous was an absurd concept yeah. when I was, you know, a senior in high school and I changed my, my notion. I went and got a degree in business and finance uh, because that was going to make me lots of money, and with money I could buy whatever I wanted. Um, and uh, then I got fired from my first job when I was th 31, probably. And and I've never been fired. I I said I meant I didn't mean first job. But I meant I got fired for the first time from a right. job. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I was kicking ass, and it was for political reasons. I'd pissed off the wrong person, and I realized when I got fired, fuck that, I'm never going back. And I embraced the fact that I was going to build a business. And then over time, as I started to do things, I was like, all right, well, I remember there was a girl I knew at the time that said, would say, I'm a creative. She worked for some ad agency in New York, and she'd say, I'm a creative, and I fucking hated her for saying that because she sounded so full of herself. But then now, and, and only that that's only important because I realized that ultimately I am creative. But what I thought a creative person was was someone that pulled an idea from the ether, from, from absolute black space, that pulled something out that was completely unique that no one had ever heard of and turned it into something brilliant and it bloomed. And then one, I'm, I'm sorry, I got deep quick, but the truth is 
I realize that no one that is creative is actually pulling things from the ether. They're taking what they've seen, their influences, whether it's a motorcycle builder or a comedian or Sam Kennison, right? Like, like right. They're, they're pulling mm-hmm. from those things and those influences and the things they've seen, whether it's someone who fell, <laughs> who yeah. got you to think about it, right? Yeah. And then they're polishing that and turning it into their thing and their version of what, of what it is and what makes it interesting or funny or whatever the hell it is. And, and that's their thing. And that's enough. And that's enough. And I yeah. have a million examples. Of that's that. the and that, but that's the hard thing, right? The that's enough part, because like I love stand up and I love the creativity of stand up. But I always say, but I'd also love to have a million dollars. You know, and when I, when I talk to young comics, I tell them, listen, you got to learn marketing because that was the part I never worked on. And branding, right? Yeah, all the I never thing, worked right? on that. I always, and I depended on other people to do it, and they didn't do it, and blah blah blah. I could go into that, but. But the truth is, you know, like I tell them, like, listen, you got to do that. You got to work on the act, but you also have to work on selling and and creating. And the people who are the best example of that, I work with a lot of jazz musicians, and they're the one you really? talk about. So I'm, a, I'm a jazz person. You talk about being purely creative and right. never getting paid. Yeah. Right. I mean, never being even appreciated until they're dead. Yeah. The most yeah, yeah, brilliant yeah. musicians, like you, you know, that. You know, we talked about Justin Timberlake, right? So. A thousand times more people know who Justin Timberlake is than Herbie Hancock, and Herbie Hancock's considered famous. Yeah, but, or Whitney Marsalis. Yeah, 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 and, yeah, 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 and, yeah and nobody knows. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you you do one pop hit, and you're and all of these guys and in exactly. jazz they make their money in the band for a pop star. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm a jazz guitarist, but I play guitar f- on tour with Justin Timberlake, JT, and I yeah. I live my whole year on that. But when it comes to just creativity for art's sake, and that's all they do. I, I joke with them about it all the time, right? Because they can take, you know, Miles Davis wrote So What in 1959, mm-hmm. right? And and um, you can, as a jazz artist today, you can play that. And they're like, man, you're brilliant. I'm like, wait a minute. I can never do, hey, man, Eddie Murphy wrote this little bit in 1983. Like, I can't do that. Yeah. But they can do it, you know, but it's what they do. You yeah. take something... And you grow and expand on it, but but watching that that to me that was like one of my highest compliments when jazz artists were like, man, you are like you're Terrific. you're improv, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know. And they yeah. talked about it. They said, man, it's like jazz, and I'm like, wow, coming from you, that's something that means something because yeah, yeah. you know. So yeah, it's and again, it's the same thing I think with the bikes, with the build, where you go from from what is there to what you create. You know, sometimes. That's yeah, sometimes, yeah. and 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 it's also not appreciated by everyone, right? So when you go to the hand built, some are like, "Oh, that's a pretty bike," and then you have the other people who are looking at the machining, looking at the the work you did, yeah. and what you guys, have, you know, what you've created. Like we were talking the other day, right? When I was talking about my CBX that's yeah. coming together, yeah. and I said, like, I don't know what I'm gonna do with colors, and and Alan's like, um, I do colors. So you're it's gonna true. get a call. Yeah. You're right, gonna good, get a yeah. call when Colors when it's together. Thing. It's like, all right, now what color do we make it? So I didn't overset the boundary because when I said that, I was like, man, I don't know. no, <laughs> there's pressure involved. No, but, because that's man. something I've I've learned over the years what I don't know. Right. And stay in your lane. Yeah. Right. So yeah, so there's yeah, there's yeah. someone who knows something I don't know. I'm gonna ask them. Just like today that's when something. they asked you about when did it, when did he hurt his chin. See, they knew you knew that because you don't go out with women. You, yeah. you just watch these things. Because you don't have a social, right. yeah. sexual life. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, you know, he has no women in the way of his race knowledge. Dude, we're were just you setting that up in your him. head just now? No, it just, no, it just flows. Oh, man. Man. It's just, <laughs> yeah, if you've been prison so much for Notice how I don't argue with him on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, yeah, well, you got a point. Yeah, yeah. I got real good at masturbating. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, see, he took it. Now, now it got personal. See, yeah, yeah. see yeah, now you see the difference. Now it's 2015, <laughs> Argentina, yeah. and acid. <laughs> now we're Mark is Rock. <laughs> you finish, you're like, damn, I'm good at that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need a woman. <laughs> I just need MotoGP and Rossi. Baby. And Marquez, yeah. so yeah, was... the, the creative part, man. I, whenever I have that conversation with someone, and there's actually a specific person that I reference that's local, you would never know. And I saw she's a famous hotelier, and she's a, a, amazing. 
and I thought she was, I lived next door to her, and she was the San Jose and St. Cecilia and mm-hmm. these other hotels that are in town. You don't know what I'm talking about. I no, love that I, you don't. I, 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 it's okay. It's totally cool. I was inspired by her stuff. And I went out to Marfa and saw uh, the, an artist called Donald Judd. Does anybody know who he is? I'll, see, I'll share it with you later. Yeah. And I saw some of the stuff he was doing out in Marfa. Do you know what Marfa is? No. I've heard of Marfa. Yeah. 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 Well, ahead, anyway. Explain it. Again, there's these localized things that you see mm-hmm. and you start to learn about it. And I, I worshipped what was happening out in this West Texas town in the middle of the desert. Anyway, long story short... It was. I went out there after knowing her work and what she was doing as in interior design and, and 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 spaces and her color palette and all these things. And I went there and saw it and went, "Holy crap! This is 40 years prior to her." She saw this, was inspired by it because her family had land out there, and brought her version and turned her version into this very very successful thing that just just got bought by the Standard, in fact. And I realized that all ideas don't have to come from nothing. They can yeah. just be your interpretation of what you've seen, and man, it's it's meant the, it, it's meant a whole lot to me personally. Yeah, I think, and I think both work. I think there are some people. Well, I know in comedy there are some people, and I admire them. The ones who it's total imagination. Yeah, they just come up, create. Who are a those scenario, guys? Too? I'm curious. Just create scenario. Harlan Williams is a yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, of course. Who uh, he man, operates from really a whole funny. different world, and it, it's, it's another level. Yeah, it's yeah, hilarious, yeah. but it but it's all coming out of his head. It's just, you know he's not using any real situation it's just creativity uh steve martin was that oh, yeah yeah steve martin yeah. texas boy that. by the way he's from waco yeah, <laughs> yeah i mean yeah, just yeah. it was just this strange and and guys like that he you know you had to catch up with him right steve yeah. martin was hilarious was for years brilliant. before people realized how funny he was yeah. because it was so out there was neck, yeah you know yeah. and uh uh, you know who used to kill me like that? The kids in the hall. I love kids in the, the hall. Kids in the, the hall, kids in the hall. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, thing, yeah. I'm crushing David your head. Yeah. That was the <laughs> that was the <laughs> stupidest, <laughs> funniest thing in the world, right? And it was one of those things like anybody who ever looked through a camera was like, why didn't I think of that? Like that is yes. the simplest yeah. kid joke in the world. And he had all of us. Like he had everybody was like doing head crusher, right? I'm crushing your head. Like when you I create, I forgot that that was from them. You yeah, create yeah, yeah. something out of nothing, and it becomes part of the culture. That's amazing. To Actually, do that. there are a lot of things like that that I've thought about. That where you realize it's affected so many people and millions of folks. And there's all these sayings that evolve and they come out. And I can't think of a single one right now. But there's ones that I am currently using. Uh, dabbing and and all these things that I think are funny cultural things that come out of nothing and you and it it, it permeates everything well you look right? at you know Star and you know Wars. one guy thought of it and just said it once you look sorry at, look at Star Wars I didn't mean to interrupt you but like when you say the force like George Lucas gets to say yeah I I did yeah. that trademark that, that, that was mine that was mine you That's know mine. people, yeah, yeah, people yeah. are talking like Yoda He's, yeah that was yeah, that that was, was me. That's a good example, right? <laughs> you know? Universal, yeah. no matter where you are. Yeah, culturally, just yeah. a cultural shift from his creation. The Simpsons, a cultural shift from their creation. When, when, and when you said it, I actually thought of immediately Monty Python, which is yeah, more UK-based. Yeah, they were Definitely. just unreal. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. But, and the thing they had to play with, which was great in the UK, was class. Yeah. The whole yeah. class system. Because they mocked it. Yeah, yeah, yeah really, really, really they, well. They, yeah. they mocked it and they, they, they wore it too because they were proper middle class boys. <laughs> but they, they had a whole wealth of material that I think when the rest of the world looked in on, it, it was something quite unique. Yeah. But And the, the, the whole sense of just stupidity. And they weren't afraid to deal with things like religion. I mean, yeah. the Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Oh, that was, yeah. I mean, just brilliant. <laughs> so much British humor. Yeah, yeah. I mean, brilliant. yeah. And just joyous to just watch it grow and emerge. And it all just came out of, of a lot of silliness. Mm. Just real, real silliness. I've recently been inspired by uh, Seinfeld and the comedians of Cars Getting Coffee. Yeah. And literally the reason I bought these mics was that when I saw that first season. And I was like, Here's a guy who's finding an excuse to go hang out with his buddies, drive the stuff that is his passion, right? Drive these cars, and just chat with them over coffee and share that experience with other folks. Right. And this podcasting thing, I'll have to admit, has never really gone anywhere because my commitment to it has never taken much. I don't have time for it. Like The mics should just be here at all times because we have conversations like this all the time. 
But um, when I watched him, it was actually because of my personal relationship with Leno. And I watched the episode with Leno, and I saw a side of Jay that I thought he never let out, yeah. right? Because two friends were chatting about their, their shared passions with cars. Right. It's, sorry that it comes back to cars, but it does. Um, <clears throat> and hearing the two very different styles work together so well, it seemed so natural. And I was like, man, that's... So, in other words, literally, as we're talking about this, this is inspired by someone else doing something that's not really creative... But maybe it is. I don't know. Well, like, it, it it was in the sense that Seinfeld's done it all, right? So he's done the, the stand-up thing, and he became famous as a stand-up, and then he had a TV show, and he became, you know, famous multimillionaire. I was blah, say, blah blah so blah. So rich, blah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and <clears throat> it's just like, what do you want to do? He's like, well, I just want to talk to my friends, you know. Like I like we were talking the other day about Leno's yeah. Garage. I always tell people, well, Leno's Garage is what Jay Leno would be doing if he didn't have a TV show, yeah. right? Just inviting friends over to play with his toy, you yeah. know, toy cars and motorcycles and this and that. And and I think Seinfeld just like he wants to talk to people and it goes wherever it goes. It's not, it's not an so interview. No it's not yeah, you know yeah. what show do you have coming up or what script is this or what movie. There's it's no acting. Like, let's just talk about who you are and did and you so see, on. Did you see the episode with? Uh, Guy or girl. What's that? Guy or girl. Uh, guy. Where he just passed away. I just completely lost it. Uh, uh, Gary Shanley. Shanley? Shanley. Gary Shanley. Oh, Shanley. No, I didn't see that one. It was right before he died. Mm. And like, it, it, you, I actually watched the episode before he died. It came out right then. And so, meaning they may have filmed it a year earlier. I don't really know. But I watched the episode. Do you, you guys know Gary Shanley? No. Nice. You should Google this. He's a, okay. He was, he was amazing. He had a I don't know. Was, show. was he an influence show. on you guys? Yeah. I mean, oh, Shanley was great. I can great. see it, yeah. yeah. And, and Gary Shanley, uh, I watched the episode and I remember thinking, wow, man, he's not the same. Like, he seems to have aged. And then he passed away a few months later, right after he did this. It was the last thing he did on camera. Mm. And he was a legend here. And anyway, um, and I found it really touching because he'd captured this moment of Gary. You know, he was so self-deprecating, and he was so, such a natural comic, and he wasn't afraid to say whatever the hell he wanted at the end of his life. Yeah. That there was this side of him I never saw, and it was so personal, I was so inspired by that. But, again, what I was going to say was that the inspiration with, with Seinfeld and watching him get to do what he wants to do, when I met Leno, the reason I became friends with Leno, but what you just said is totally true, I was there with Bruff Superior. Right, so do you know Bruff Superior? No. There's one down right below us. It's a half million dollar pre-war motorcycle. It was the sport bike of the 20s. It's not the shifter bike, is it? The, the one, one on the table? Yeah. Right yeah that's no, right. that's an Indian. There's an Indian. Yeah, we're I talking mean, about right the one with the hand shift. Yeah. That's okay. the Indian. Okay. We could get really geeky for a while. <laughs> it's got all these push rods, this <laughs> overhead valve. Yeah. It was the Rolls Royce of motorcycles in, 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 in Britain, all over the world. But okay. It was the fastest thing out there. Um, the one that's below us is uh, been turned into a replica of the T.C. Lawrence. Uh, yeah, this is a long story, but anyway, I could get. I, I'm going to geek out on motorcycles. Anyway, um, we were. I was with Bruce Superior, and I'd met up with these guys from a, a British, uh, um, a guy who owns the brand, and we were going to go to Bonneville to set a, a land speed record. And I met up with Paul De Orleans, the vintage gent, at Jay Leno's place with Bruff Superior, the brand, and my guys, my team, which was only three of us at the time, um, we were going to be the support crew, the ground support crew, to make this thing happen. And we met at Jay's place, and he was on vacation for a week. He was still doing The Tonight Show. Yeah. And he spent a whole week on vacation with us in the workshop, working on motorcycles and cars. And and while he's... Oh, by the way, turn your ringer off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's good advice. We didn't get that. Yeah, I didn't get the memo. You, you know, it, it's like really late in, in the UK right now. I can't believe yeah. your phone's going off. Uh, it's Howard. It's Howard. It's Howard. That's Howard. Howard's He's on. relentless. Anyway, um, is that uh, you saw that his vacation the whole week was spent with us. Yeah. And because I was there this, this perfect time, he was there every car. We were getting cars running. I got to ride in that big steam tractor, yeah. that mm -hmm. big, giant, like 300-ton right. thing. I rode in a, a Cord, I rode in a, a steam car, a white, and I rode all this crazy stuff. His vacation was doing what he does now. Yeah. Sorry, it's not didn't that deep. He but buy, yeah. Didn't he buy like a bunch of Bruff Superiors? Like, it still hurts me. He bought like yes. eight or ten of them or something like that. from a Ten? He bought 18. 
18, yeah. And then I think it was 16. He already had two. Something like that. He yeah. has the largest collection of Bruff Spears in the whole. Right. World. He bought the collection from somebody who in I don't England. know if they passed away or sold yeah. it or whatever. But yeah, I remember. Yeah, he passed away. Because I remember going to the garage and he just had them all. He's like, yeah, Dude. yeah, I just bought those. Yeah. <laughs> New toys. I love that we all do the same. Yeah. yeah. So, so I did a podcast here. The first podcast I ever did was with was with Leno, <laughs> and we filmed for the Handbuilt Show, and he sat right there. And we were, we came in here. It was fucking. It was the same time of year, obviously, but it was hot, and we were all sweating. And we've been on a motorcycle ride with the camera crew and all this shit. And you know how that really goes. It's not much yeah. fun. And we sit down and we start to cool off in here because it's nice AC. And he we we just hit record, but the, like the conversation that literally was occurring while filming. On, out on location and then at every stoplight we go to my house and he's telling me how I shouldn't have a mortgage and I shouldn't I shouldn't invest in real estate because that's credit and like he's so yeah. he's so specific <laughs> I, I love hanging out with Jay because it's like I'm hanging out with some old uncle who has no grasp on reality whatsoever right. he's like you shouldn't have credit cards credit cards are not good and I'm yeah. like you're a man of the world. Anyway, I go to go to Lindo's this last time, and he goes, "Hey, come over here. I'm going to show you something." And we go into the back corner, and there's 18 rough superiors in a room, in an area of a room, yeah. right at that point, because the room hadn't been built. It was about the size of this office, and, like just stacked up. And I, I couldn't get between them to take photos. And I was like, "What the fuck? Why do you yeah. have all these bikes? Mm -hmm. Each one of the rough superiors is worth minimum 100 grand, right? And he's bought them all at one go." And he goes, don't show anybody these photos. And I'm like, why? He goes, I think the UK might come after me for this. This could be something like heritage. <laughs> <laughs> He's afraid that they're going to try to... Stole a history. They're gonna, they're, exactly. They're going to pull it back as a museum history because it's the largest collection wow. of Bruff Superiors in the whole world because they only made like a few hundred yeah. ever, right? Anyway, um, and eventually he's obviously, uh, Alonzo's seen it. He built a room that's like probably 5,000 square feet. Yeah. And they're all just spread out. I'll show you some stuff. The later. story really I heard cool. about him that I liked the most was, um, I think, I think it was Hugo talking about it because he's he's hung out with him a few times. Was you could be talking to Jay and he'll be showing you a bike and he 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 likes to start them up. Yeah. But then he'll start up a bike, get on it and just go. And, and take and, off. And and he's left people standing there before because he just gets caught in the moment. Yeah. And it's like, oh, this bike's running. I, I'm going to ride it now. I like this. And well, then everything, gone. everything and like, he has oh, works. And, and I've got this vision. Mm. Of, of kind of Jay kind of entertaining people taking them around showing the garage and then just leaving them standing there kind of awkwardly because he's just like no just, in love do you know with what? Bike. this bike's more interesting than you yeah. are I'm going to go ride it or, be, or better yet you're wrenching on a Bruff Superior that's his while in between working on our land speed bike and he comes in in a Accord which is this early American uh, they call it the Baby Duesenberg right this beautiful car because I'm with Sam Lovegrove do you know Sam? No. he's on um, Shed and Buried there's a TV show in the yeah, UK. Yeah, there is, yeah. Yeah, that, he's, we, he's we, the guy We don't get show. to watch TV anymore. It's okay. I don't watch TV yeah. either. Back I wouldn't know day, about I it if it wasn't TV. for Sam. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you remember TV. Yeah, I anyway, remember TV just he's, about. He, he's, he's become something in the, in the UK. Anyway, uh, Sam and I were there working on Bruffs. And he pulls in in this court and goes, are you guys getting in or what? Because it's a four-door and a big car. And we get in and we're like, have no clue where he's taking us. He pulls up on the freeway in this 1930s car going 70 miles an hour between big rigs. I'm fucking in the back seat, scared to death. <laughs> I mean, I mean, literally, Stefan and I are sitting. I've got great photos. I'll show you sometime. And I'm going, we're gonna fucking die. We're we're gonna die. He is gonna kill us on this freeway in a car with Jay Leno. And he takes us to the grocery store, <laughs> so he can buy <laughs> corn and chicken, and because it was his vacation. And this, I just met him a couple of days. Oh, so he can, and he brings it back to the shop, and he pulls the grill out and makes us barbecue chicken. Fantastic. And boils a bunch of, of uh, corn on the cob. Yeah. And we hang on. <laughs> the whole experience was quite kind yeah, of he's, surreal. He's very yeah. ordinary for who he is. Totally. And he'll yeah, talk yeah. to you about anything except show business. Yeah, yeah, you we know, were talking the about minute, that shit. You, the that's minute you good. ask him, you but know. But that's petrol like, for you. Oh, what's Tom yeah. Cruise really like? He's like, yeah, I got to go. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. He's, he's yeah. short. I got to right. go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> was it, I, I get that. Was it, was it you I was telling the story to where he, we were hanging out for the game show thing and he was like, yeah, yeah it was last night. Mm -hmm. It was last night. God, I've had so much going on this weekend. And he was like, I was like, oh, I get it. You do this whole thing where you bring all your friends together and 
we do a one day of shooting for all these segments. He goes, yeah, like what I need is some more fucking friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Alan. It's just what he said. Yeah. Yeah, they were so caught in the He goes, yeah, Alan, that's just what I need is some more fucking friends. <laughs> <laughs> and then the whole crew laughs because they realize how true this really yeah. is, you know. <laughs> anyway, um, I, I'm, I'm, I was still fascinated by the idea that that he studies and you're more of a natural comic or... I don't, I don't know how I describe me. I just, um, I, I really wouldn't. I mean, I, I, I hear what other people say, and and because I just, it, I guess it's hard for me to just would say people say what kind of comic are you? I said, well, I hope I'm funny. I hope people laugh. <laughs> I'm the you funny guy. I mean? yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, I hear what other people say about me. You know, I like, and it, what cracks me up, honestly, what I love is when people. They go, here's my BT impression, and they do it, and I laugh because it's like, what's a BT impression? Well, my my impression would be T. The thing about him, and it's what's so different between us, his energy is so high all the time compared he, to you. Yeah, his, yeah no, yeah, compared yeah. to anybody. <laughs> compared to anybody, this guy runs. So it's on, not just MotoGP. He runs on Monster. <laughs> and, no, and, the best. The best was when, and this was when when it, when you know we first got into MotoGP. So. Man, I was like, huh. I mean, literally was like, remember the Beatles when they first in America? They were like, huh. no, that's how it was. Well, we watched, <laughs> we watched, we watched the old film clips. Yeah, yeah, I mean. yeah, right, so right. I was like that with with like with it, with GP and the writers and Alonzo. He took me aside. He go, listen, these people like you, but you've got to control your. He was energy. scaring people. Yeah, he, I mean, literally, his energy was yeah, so scaring. People. Scary big black man. Yeah, with he all literally took me aside. Yeah, listen, yeah. he goes, listen, these people. It was almost like a coach going, listen, these people like you. But you don't. I go, okay, man, okay, okay. You know, I mean, yeah, and that, that's and that's what She'll killed me to this day. Because I remember, it was just like that, That uh, I don't know if you remember ESPN had NFL Live in the old one, in the very beginning, you could tell it was Greg Lloyd, he told he was pissy, and, and Bill Cowher was trying to calm down, he goes, listen, just rush the quarterback. And that's what, and that, and that's what Alonzo did to me, he goes, listen, these people like you, but you got to bring your energy down. You gotta, I go, Brilliant. okay, man. okay, I got you, I got you. <laughs> so, ever since then, it's been a conscious effort to be almost like high and by, because I know me, if I, if, if it's you stay me, in? Yeah, if it's, yeah, yeah cause yeah. eventually that, this will come out and it'll be yeah. like, ah, and some people are just like, what the hell? So I know, I know how I am now. So I kind of, it's best for me to be like, ah, then like, ah. Oh. Hang back, yeah. hang, yeah. Back. hang back. Well, it's almost like <laughs> I was telling that Maverick Miala story. Yeah. Then that real me comes out. Yeah. And then it's like, yeah, oh, no. shit. No, I was impressed. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So. I'm not that yeah, passionate about anything. So I try to, yeah, I try to, I try to curtail that. <laughs> yeah. I try to curtail it now. Every time around Alonzo, he he's a constant reminder of me. Okay, curtail it. Just just kind of be like, <laughs> just turn know, it down a little bit. Turn it down yeah. a lot. Turn it down uh, yeah. a lot. I actually use that now. It's like, you're at like a nine. If you could just get it a seven, I could deal with this easier. <laughs> if, if I could, if, man, if I could get it down chill. to a seven, I, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If I could, he's never gotten it down to a seven. <laughs> just so you know, there, there is no seven. Yeah, yeah. But I'm when like, I crash, though, I crash like Talladega, man. It's like, oh, it's ugly because it's like I'm always up here, and then, and then when it, it comes down. Yeah, it's like okay, it's it's time. a yard it's sale. Gone. Yeah, shit's everywhere. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're out for four days. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yes, you are. Yard sale is yes. one of my favorite sayings because it yeah. always conjures the same thought. We were on a, um, we were on a, a ride. The, the, you know the quail, right? You ever go on the ride? No, I haven't done the ride. I got to do the Get ride. Get there on Thursday here. and ride yeah. with us I gotta for do Friday the ride. morning. Okay, so we're gonna go this week. Wait, you told me I won't make it this year. Oh fuck but... me. Okay, so the quail motorcycle gathering. They do a ride the Friday morning. Is it Friday morning? I think it's Friday yeah. morning. And the show is this short little six-hour thing on Saturday, and there's like a hundred guys riding. And the first year I go, I go with my crew. We've got a Ducati, uh, a Sport Classic we've built that's quite quick, and a couple other bikes. And we get there, and we realize that 95% of the dudes there are are old, on old bikes. God, I hate I hate that. I just said that on... We may not publish this part. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> they're a bunch of old guys. Vintage. Right they're vintage riders they're on vintage, vintage riders. motorcycles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're conservative. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you weren't there at the end of the show today, but I am not a conservative rider, right? And neither is my crew. And we show up with our bikes, and we're the young guys. And we're all in like our late 30s, but we're the young dudes riding this ride. And um, we, we, we ride through the wine country, and, and we're riding through the hills on all these bikes. And we'll start at the back of the pack, and there's a hundred and something riders, and we end up at the front. Me and Paul Dorland's, the vintage gent rides really hard. And we'll go to the very, very front. We go to a wine, a vineyard, 
we have some wine and we talk and we have some cheese and we do our thing and then there's that's the first half and then we go to leave for the second half and we let everyone leave the parking lot first <laughs> and we go to pull out and Paul and I and Andy who's the head fabricator who does all that beautiful uh, aluminum work downtown or uh, downstairs leave and we go to pull out and I'm passing 70 people at once because there's no one else in this two lane road and I'm going we're going past all of them at 100 they're all going 30 <laughs> and and some guy in a gold wing decides he's going to go with us or some bigger bike he's going to go with us hits the brakes just a bit early <gasps> and Andy grabs the front who rides it in El Dorado goats Gucci grabs the front brake of this Ducati Sport Classic complete custom this is the tank off that bike mm. this, this nice. is the gas tank off that bike you can tell it's a handmade custom machine right Beautiful. we built another one for it Beautiful. and um and the front end just washes out no and it's a total fucking yard sale he takes out like three bikes <laughs> everybody's oh, in the ditches no. <laughs> and the I guys, wasn't there those Meaning guys I was loved ahead it. you know those guys those yeah, are, yeah. they just so, like yeah yeah, yeah, so, yeah okay kid yeah <laughs> show us what you made of <laughs> I just keep going because they were behind me they were they were following me I never even noticed an hour and a half later we get to our Shit. destination and I'm like so where's Andy and they're like oh yeah you didn't hear there was a crash I was like uh, what? <laughs> There's a crash on your Ducati. He took like three bikes. Total fucking yard sale. And Andy, apparently, as he was sliding in the road, full gear, was going, fuck, 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 <laughs> while he was sliding on <laughs> the road because he knew what he had done. No one got hurt, <clears throat> thankfully. Yeah, uh, but I don't, I, I don't know what was... I didn't see it, but they called it a yard sale. Yeah, that's enough. That's I know funny. that shit just went everywhere. And you're inviting me to go on a ride with you. Yeah, I was going to say that. Uh, yeah. No, out of guilt by association. You ride, but you're building a CBX and you ride slow? Yeah, yeah I'll take the CBX. Speaking of edits, easy. i got to use the bathroom. bathroom it's edit. okay to go. Bathroom edit. Yeah. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. Where, where's the yeah. nearest one, by the way? It's um, the bottom of the stairs to the left. left. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we got to get a room. We, yeah. he feel, you didn't get a hotel? He feels, no, Arun. Yeah, okay. He's the guy who oh. came with us. He yeah, yeah, feels yeah. abandoned. Yeah, with, yeah, we just he texted he's me. here? Oh. Yeah, he's downstairs. He thinks we're we abandoned. We can end this shit. Yeah. Yeah. This could go on for days. So, yeah. I know, this is great. Yeah. This is great. I've got, this I've is got what I was calling. It's like, you want to get in that Red Bull party? Because I, I can still do I, that. Yeah, if you don't mind, if he can stay away. Hold on. He just said, he literally said, tell me who's there. Hold on, let me ask you. It's still going. He just said, tell me yeah, who you want. We got to find done. Tony, Thank too. You. Oh, shit. If yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, this was fun, man. This was great. This is, this is yeah. great. Seriously. Because yeah. we were going to talk about this anyway. Yeah. Yeah, no, this this is fantastic. When he gets back, I'll do an intro, yeah, a proper intro, it. and then we'll be done. Yeah. Right. Um, I liked your you Evil Knievel picture, by the way. That's a local guy, too. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. some good stuff in it. I have, I have a, if you look downstairs below the stairs, there's a flat file, and it's packed every drawer is full of posters i had a poster problem for a while i kicked it it took it took a bit it took a bit habit. yeah uh <laughs> at least it was posters though and not like bikes or something yeah. you know what I mean? no i don't have any motorcycles at all oh, yeah, it's it's <laughs> not like i have any audio you know equipment I mean? I know, or like, uh yeah, foam yeah. on the wall for the soundproofing <laughs> and extra That's, spotlights you think and, i'm you know. yeah <laughs> you're right it's an office of a crazy person i isn't love it, it. It shows your personality right there, babe. Two massive fucking screens, some foam no, on the wall. No, there's three massive oh, fucking three screens. Fucking yeah, massive yeah. screens. Some uh, foam on the wall so you can bash your head against the wall when people are not kind of no, it's, hearing it's you. So the way it started was I had my office by that window or my right. desk by that window, and there was no wall there. And people would come up the stairs, and because I'm ADHD as shit, the moment they made eye contact with me, it broke all concentration, mm. and nothing else would happen. Yeah. And I would be like, fuck. Ah! fucker yeah, right yeah. and then we built that wall and I have, I have an assistant that sits out there and he became the gatekeeper and my efficiency and my effect efficacy yeah. like how much Just I could get done yeah. Yeah. immediately started to climb <laughs> we yeah. have the same issue so if that door is I leave it open but yeah. if that door is closed that means yeah. I'm trying you're to deep. working you're deep yeah. in something so those are actually there mostly so that I don't hear as much and, they, and it works yeah. really well and, it's cool uh, so without wearing ear earphones, <laughs> it's it's not as contrived as it looks. It was more like I need to, I need to isolate myself from everything that happens downstairs, and most of the work and the heavy fabrication, all that goes on in the other bays instead yeah. of here, because this is my work area. Yeah. So it's one or the other. But right. um, anyway, it's um, it's cool, very cool. It's evolved, but I'm gonna I buy like a it. building and move out of here, which sucks. I mean, I have to. This is I've yeah. been renting this for seven years. I spend so. a lot of money on rent. Yeah. 
Um, Landon says, it's still going. Cool. Connecting now. So he says, yeah, you guys are. Oh, thank you. Um, Vicky. Yeah. I dated a six foot Vicky for like two years. Did you? Yeah. Six foot yeah, Vicky. But, That's a yeah, lot of fucking right. Vicky to it's handle, man. a lot of man. Vicky, right? I mean, like, this package right here is fucking I'll tell you. more than two handfuls. <laughs> Five, two and a half. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> and and without heels and I have to add the half, half babe did you meet my wife yeah you met yeah, yeah she's, she's five gorgeous one. Yeah, five one. gorgeous I'm a little bit bigger just a little a tiny bit just a little yeah, bit yeah, you bigger. got her by but a quarter I got of a, a stone I got a big mouth <laughs> <laughs> and you're from London no but North London yeah yeah okay which yeah. is it's like um Arsenal you okay. know Arsenal football yeah yeah we I live like up the road from them it's like your accent is that your team uh, yeah, I kind of grew up with them, but I don't support. I don't do football. I do MotoGP. Okay. I don't okay. do football, babe. I can't. I, two I, sports, like I, I, have no I life, haven't got so the I room. I have no life. <laughs> I literally haven't got the yeah. fucking room. I, I get so excited about. He's up all night. He's watching seven I get, screens. Like, yeah. I, I get palpitations <laughs> when I'm watching the race. I'm fucking. There's palpitations well, going well, you on know right what? there, babe. The very begin. This is always the start. The start in the first turn. It's the first turn. Yeah. Every race you just go. Just keep who's, safe. who's yeah. gonna die? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's gonna exactly. keep him safe. Cause man, I mean, when it, yeah. when it oh, yeah, it, 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 so it makes you just uh, shudder. So, so but Moto you, Two, Moto Two is the first turn. That is insane. It's, yeah, man, that's crazy. Moto that's Two is, is yeah. this year. Yeah. 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 there's so many bikes. <laughs> with this year, Moto Two. Yeah. This year, Moto Two is probably the, the strongest feel yeah. it's ever been. That's yeah. saying something. I mean, you got you got Hector Barber who came down from GP. You got Alex Marquez. And you got that uh, peg of bag now who won today, who's pegged to be the next up, the next one. And Yoan Mir, people don't know how Yoan Yoan Mir is the. He said it. He said it. He goes. He goes. I only want to be here for one year, and I want to go to GP. So where's everybody else gonna go? I mean, where's I mean, honestly, where's everybody else gonna go? I mean, it's like Ian Oni said. Dude, I, was, well, I got my I'm kind of amazing. No, you no, don't. You fucking <laughs> where, where, where are you going, Ian Oni? <laughs> Suzuki ain't gonna want you no more. Even though he's having his best year ever, yeah. and he's playing nice. He's yeah. being nice. He's, he's being smiling. Really he's, nice. he's kissing babies and petting yeah. puppies. But he's out of there, man. <laughs> I mean, he really is. He's consistent. He's getting the okay. paycheck. All right. So I'm not a spectator. So I'm totally interrupting you. I'm not a spectator sport guy. I played basketball. I played soccer. I, I played all of it. I love playing. I love racing motorcycles. I don't like watching it. Mm. Do you have you been on a racetrack? Yeah. Yeah. Like, absolutely. Like, like track on days. a proper sport park. Okay, yeah, you've yeah, done. Yeah, okay, yeah. have you? Never. But, but, but for my birthday. Hey! But what I want to do on my birthday is I want to fly over to I want to fly over to England on my birthday. As I'm working on that's my project now is I want to get a I got to get a suit and I want to go over to. I want to go to England and I want to... Uh, you don't have to wear a suit when you come to England. Well, I want to so get my own. I mean, oh, it's a nice thing to do. Yeah. But it's not required. <laughs> yeah. It's but he's taking like the fucking piss. He but needs I, a I suit. Know. Like a... Like a, 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 a I know. I just got it. I was like... Tea and a suit. Skinny tie. Yeah, the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Stop with Seville Row. Yeah. Seville Row. But you're going to come over and what track? Yeah. Um. I got a buddy who's... uh. He does the the Leon Haslam school. He's a, a, one yeah. of the instructors. Sorry, that was good. And so he um and my friend, I don't know if you remember Carla. She married a yeah. mechanic who who actually is the Leon Haslam's um uh, uh, wrench guy. He cool. built a bike for him. Uh, his name is Dave Hopkins. So and he's um he talked about me going over there and uh and having an instructor and, and going on the track day. So that's what I'm working on now. Good. That's what I want to do. Let us know when you come. That's Have you ridden track? Day? Yeah, yeah, I've done track days. Yeah. I don't know if I'll do any more. I mean, I don't have a sport bike now, and um, the real joy is no, to I, do a track day not on a sport bike. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the, yeah. The transformation for me was I got yeah. the Ducati Sport Classic Thousand. Yeah. In fact, Vicky bought it for me, and then she's I like, took it back. She's like, yeah, and now she, oh, yeah, now she's mine got it. now. But it was basically, <laughs> I've got to slow you down because you're you're driving like a wanker all the time. Yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. it's dangerous. You ride too fast. Only I can be a wanker. And yeah, that's your job now. <laughs> yeah. And uh, she said, I'm, I'm going to get this air cooled retro star motorcycle. And it's just going to slow you down and stop you riding like a dick. So we used to do regular track days at Brands Hatch. And, and I was getting, I was on the Super Duke R's. I was getting to, the, I was going to get an RC8R. The yeah, ATM. that bike's awesome. Crazy, yeah, 169 brake yeah. horsepower. It weighs I mean, nothing. Which, which yeah. these days actually isn't, is, isn't much, but the but, bike was uh, light. Back, back yeah. then, that was a real motorcycle. And so I got this Sport Classic and I thought, you know what, this is so good. I'd had it five days. I'm going to take it on track. And I was, was awesome. two or three seconds a lap quicker. Now it's a 90 
brake horsepower air cooled bike but on a twisty track like Brian's Hatch it's so confidence inspiring in the corners and I think the thing that it taught me was it doesn't matter what bike you ride just take it on a track yeah because well, sure whatever you've rider. got you'll be quicker and, and it's always you not the bike that your point 100%. before yeah. I mean when we were doing that track day there were two guys there that were sharing the track with us and one was this really old dude on an Enfield 250 cafe racer what? nice and uh, he was about 80 years old he couldn't he had walk a collection but he could ride them. He had a mechanic with him, this old... I think he's the guy he that owns, owns Birkenstock Yeah, something. he owns Birkenstock. So he shoes. was, And he was faster than everybody on that 250. And then there was another kid on an SV650. Yeah, about that's earlier, a great bike. An yeah. SV650. And he was lapping everybody because he was in the S, SV650 Cup. Yeah. So there's everybody else on these kind of, you know, R1s, R1s. and CBR1000s, yeah. Fireblade, whatever's. And, and then there's this kid on an SV650, an old man on this old Enfield 250, and me on a Ducati Sport Classic, and we were just creaming everybody. Yeah. Um, and, and really, for me, you, I, I think if you've got a sports bike on a track, it's like turning up on the sports field with all the gear. Yeah. The last thing you want to do is turn up on a track day with a Panigale or an R1M, because if you're not the quickest, you're a loser. loser. Yeah. Whereas if you turn up and you can be the underdog on something with a hundred brake horsepower and an air cooled engine, uh, and then you can ride the skin off that bike and you can have such a good time. And, and if other people are faster than you, you can just go, yeah, well, you know, it's not such a big, big deal bike. <laughs> but then anyone you pass, you are a superhero. Yeah. See, I, I think this is, might be the difference between you and I. I don't give a shit. If I lose, I lose. <laughs> the, I, I'm more about like, I'm concerned that the technology will save me from being a dumbass. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. no, I, I actually, you and Stefan could totally ride together. <laughs> Stefan loves going out on a monster and just creaming everybody and late breaking them and destroying them. But he also drops the bike every time he goes. <laughs> every yeah. single time. Uh, he dropped the MV Agusta that we have downstairs. He dropped the Ducati Monster. He's dropped uh, 900 SS. He's dropped a bunch of stuff. Yeah, I've, I've never crashed out. gets old. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not down for crashing. And I don't care if anybody goes, you're slow. Cool. I had just as much fun as you did. I have a, a yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> but not I about like being, that. It's about being faster than people expect. I don't That's need to true. Be the yeah, fastest. Yeah. Absolutely not. Because my competitions with myself. Yeah, can yeah. I go quicker than me? Yeah. Not, yeah. not, not the guy. Unless he's my mate. If I go, if I get those few friends. I'm yeah. With, when I'm with Stefan or Roland Sands or whatever, yeah, I feel it. Yeah, I, I, I feel don't want to race Roland Sands. He's quick. That sounds like a bad oh, idea. Oh, have, getting, getting Roland passing or Schwanz or any of those guys passing me. I'm okay with it. I'll tell you, the, the race I need to see is uh, Fast Freddy Spencer comes to the bike shed or not, and he's promised to have a race with Vicky at the Cafe Racer Cup. So I don't know how we're going to handicap Fast him. Freddy. Yeah. At, at, yeah. at Grand's Hatch? Or? Yeah. 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 It's at Lydon Hill. Hill. Okay. Yeah. 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 My brother both look up to that He's, he's literally right. like our race sheet. How old is he now? Uh, he's got to be know. like late 60s. No, and he's still he's quick. He's not that old, is he? Yeah, I think he fucking he's is. a sprightly if he's late. He he he's he's got a young 50s. wife. Right? Well, my, so. my point about the whole thing was that if you're a, if you're a super fan, the only time I'm able to relate to any spectator sport of any kind is if I've done it. Right. And 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 yeah. so when it comes to the track, I've done Coda. It's yes. Coda that I get the most interested in right. the race because I know every fucking corner yeah. and every ripple, which and apparently they've straightened field. some of those ripples out in the last yeah. couple of months. Yeah. Uh, I know I know turn 19 is the only place I've ever spun in a car. Like, I know that that's the corner that I'm at full lean and it scares the shit out of me. Apparently, they fixed that. So now I'm going to see a whole other race. But I, that's all. It was that I have to relate directly to the person or either yeah. that or their or, friend. Yeah, I, if yeah. they're a friend, it's cool. Yeah. I'm the other way around because the, the thing about that level of ride, if you ride with someone that can really, really ride, yeah. they are so much faster than you yeah, it doesn't that matter. I actually can't relate. Yeah, yeah, because, it doesn't matter. You know, yeah, it's you, not you, relatable you're in at all. Craft, <laughs> and you ride, and you think you're quite quick, and then some guy comes past you on the back wheel, having a conversation with a passenger. He's like this. Yeah. 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 He's, text, he's texting. Up he's texting. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Because people who are good are so good. Yeah. I mean, these guys on the MotoGP, they're they're doing like 200 miles an hour. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they're yeah. gladiators. I mean, I I can't. There's nothing yeah. that's going at 170, 180, yeah. I did a 226 out there, but it's also which I was really their, proud of, right? Yeah. And I mean, they're doing two flat. Yeah, right? exactly. You look at their lap times, and you look at your lap time, and you're yeah. like, 
yeah, yeah two different things yeah. Yeah. it's like yeah. when you yeah. see yourself on video like you, you you try and catch these guys on video and, and you can't even see them yeah. Yeah. and then and you're then you, fucking pooping you in see along. yourself <laughs> on video and someone like Brad Hatch and so you're like slow. it looks like I'm going shopping yeah. Yeah. right yeah. Yeah. yeah I was gonna say yeah. the when worst I think thing, I'm dragging the worst a knee thing is when you think you're leaning yeah when I think my knee is about to touch and it's like this far away Yeah. my excuse is I've got little knees so I can't I don't need to get it down you know I mean I'm just but yeah, to me, it makes these guys superheroes yeah. because what they do is so far and above what what I can do that mm. I actually find it completely impossible to relate because I just look at them and go, they're gods. Yeah, yeah. I just mean I can beat half of them by putting their helmet on the top shelf. <laughs> they'll never, they'll never get out of the garage. Yeah. They're just down there. It's like, yeah, go, go get your helmet. Oh, yeah. can't? can't I'll see you out there. Yeah, yeah. I'll see you in a bit. Yeah. Yeah. If I put when, Danny Pedrosa's helmet yeah. on the yeah. top when you shelf find there, that ladder, Danny yeah. can't Dude, when go Marquez anywhere. dropped that bike on the wall and ran up, I don't know about you guys, Classic. but I was watching him run. I was thinking, that guy guy's a midget. Yeah, he's a baby man. Yeah. Max Biaggi, yeah. he was tiny. Yeah. Well, we met, yeah. we met yeah. him yeah. again. I met him a couple of years ago. Super nice guy. Yeah, yeah. Really I saw him nice today. Guy. I talked yeah. to him on the grid, and I yeah. saw him in a, in a, at a, at an A Stars of Hospitality. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I, lo- I like was, Max, man. He's Vicky's he, new best mate. Do you know what? He actually yeah. dragged us into the pits to uh, walk us through the Aprilia. 30 minutes before they're going live at, uh, for uh, Scott Redding and Aspargo. And he's fucking like all the guys are pulling everything together, and he's walking us through them, and he's talking us through now, them. Like is, I literally nearly. This like, is I was... five minutes after the PR guy yeah. had said you can't go into the garage <laughs> yeah. because there's the MotoGP like... race in half an hour. Yeah. And then Max comes up to go, "Hey, Vicky, Vicky come on in the garage." Yeah. And the mechanics are looking at him like, "You asshole! Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Why have you bought these?" It's like, "Do you want to? Do you want a photograph?" I'm like, "You can't take photographs in the pit because you give away the secrets." Yeah. He's like, yeah, "Just stand there." Taking a photo <laughs> against the grid. Yeah. That was talk about car That made block. my yeah, that made my like car block. You want, yeah. so yeah. could do yeah, anything, that... and they were just looking through gritted yeah. teeth. Yeah. Like, these guys I felt guilty. Great, I was like, yeah. I did feel guilty. I was like, these guys are great. here to so do a job, and we might team. just fuck it up for them. You nearly, you nearly tripped on one of the discs on well, the floor. We were literally I was stepping like, over parts of bike, and they're trying to reassemble the bikes before everyone assembles on the grid. I'm like, this is insane. That's crazy. It was so funny. It was. It made my mate say GP. It was. It was kind of <laughs> really my... exciting and really embarrassing. It was like I really want to be there, but I really don't want to be there because yeah. I'm so embarrassed. I'm in your way. And but then, then we... there's Max Piaggi, so shut up. And then That's we kind great. of blagged it into the Ducati area and um, watched the race. And like, I, there was loads of Marquez fans there. And I'm there with my Rossi fucking uh, flag. I was like, yeah. I've done how that to win a few friends times. and influence people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, do you know what? We sat. We actually got put in a Marquez stand once. And I and it was one of the great races where they had a proper battle, and I fucking the whole grandstand. I'm the one who's standing up, going fuck it, ah! and then then Marquez crashed, and it was like it was that moment because he pushed. It was the the one where he pushed uh, Rossi, and they were yeah. having this little thing. It's a bang. It was yeah. where was it? Was it? Um, it, was it was Silverstone. Okay. And they had a little thing, and Rossi crashed. Actually, he broke his he broke his fucking leg at Silverstone. Was it it was, I'm sure, it, or his collarbone. He broke something. Ross, he broke his collarbone. Uh, no, no, the, the Marquez broke his collarbone. You are talking to the encyclopedia. I know. Yeah, he come knows. on. The, Ro- we uh, can the, do the Marquez this. collarbone broke. No, Rossi crashed. Rossi crashed at Silverstone. Rossi crashed. Rossi crashed at Silverstone. Battling Marquez. Battling Marquez. You're questioning the encyclopedia. I know. I'm, I'm yeah, testing yeah. it now. You're, testing you're, it. you're poking the fucking no. bear right now. I know. I'm not. He's yeah. going to so lay really, down on you. He's like a yeah. friendly I'm, bear. I'm, I'm like, I don't. Okay, let me. You're let dealing me, with my wife I, who I'm, also I'm, tells me that I owe 100 pounds for something that's money she didn't get. <laughs> <laughs> and she looks at me with such confidence. I'm like, like, oh, right. Okay. Anyway, I'll go. I remember I remember Marquez like, in pre practice, in the warm up driving crazy and, and Crutchlow had crashed and I remember Marquez went through like a bat out of hell and crashed remember he had to, he had to run away because you know, his bike was been going through the, uh, going through the sand have... and then Marquez did his uh, uh, his collarbone or something or shoulder popped out of place and they popped it back into place and he was and he was able to race he was only like I, 19 or something oh, yeah, I, yeah, I remember I'm that though good. I'm good I remember yeah. that because they, cause they yeah. cut up in the sand and they were getting him up he was like oh fucking... shit because the bike literally was coming through the, they gave him a yellow flag that was a big controversy they gave him a yellow flag to slow down and he was he just <clears throat> gunned it and he lost it too and his bike was going to the ground and they all all the safety workers in Crutchlow took out running they thought they were going to get yeah, by his yeah. bike and, and Marquez broke his 
collarbone or, or oh, shoulder to pop it back in place. But the and question he... is, who was the doctor who worked on his? Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're sitting right. What That's model was question. the ambulance <laughs> that yeah. hauled him out of right, the infield? I may be fucking of the race. Anyway, let's wrap this shit. Right. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. I need a drink. I'm, I think I'm done with you, fuckers. Yeah. This could go on for weeks. Can we do an introduction? I'm Vicky. Yeah. <laughs> All right, seriously, guys. Thank you. I wish that you guys live closer because I'd probably do this cool. once a week to make me feel good. Thank you. Cool. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Thank, thank you for coming. Us. JT. Guys are coming to <laughs> yeah. Thank you, buddy. And Dutch and Vicky. Yeah. Else. These guys, they have to come to London. Yeah. All right, yeah, hold on. That sounds like a trip. Yeah. Could you be like funny in the UK? I have been. He yeah, has. I've worked. Uh, I'm I've from done the, the UK Brighton and I'm fucking lost. I've done Kilkenny. <laughs> I've done the comedy store at Piccadilly. Yeah, I've there worked. I've worked the UK. And you're going to come and do my. I haven't story done by, Edinburgh. Uh, voice That's here. the only thing I haven't done. Edinburgh Comedy Festival is legendary. Yeah, I haven't yeah. done that. Yeah, That's so, cool. so actually, as a motorcycle guy, maybe let's talk. I'll, I'll email you. Yeah. It, because if you could come to Bike Shed, right? We could go American yeah. on that shit. Right. We Just could critique Harleys. everything we see. Yeah. <laughs> I'll bring my I, Harley. I refuse to ride yeah. a Harley. I refuse. I don't have a Unless fucking a Harley. Track. You, you oh, know no. better. No. You know better. Thank you. The uh, closest I got was a Buell. I had a Buell for a while. I have a I no, don't Buell's do okay. Harley. I refuse to ride a Harley. Harley. Have you guys yeah. seen the Buell that we built? No. The, the no, Bueller. We the Bueller. No. That's only going to be American. Yeah. I ride an Indian. I ride an Indian. Yeah, I did the flat track. We're allowed to know Buell. Yeah. Flat the Bueller, track. do you know That's what I'm talking track. about? Well, we All know. But, uh, what, you mean Ferris Bueller or the Bueller? Yes, Bueller? Ferris Bueller. I, mean, I love Bueller. Ferris. Yeah. I watched Bueller. that the other day. We built one anyone, Bueller. Anyone? Bueller. Sorry, anyone. I that. We built a Bueller. I'm about to buy it back because we gave it away in a contest, and the guy who got it had no idea how to handle it because yeah. it's a Bueller with a seat height like this, and we're going to buy it back this weekend. Perfect height for yeah, me. Hopefully. All right. Anyway, um, if you could come to Bike Shed with me, that would be fucking killer. I'd love to have you guys there. Um, we'll do a podcast in email. Vicky's office. Email me. Let yeah. me know when it is. Yeah. All right, no, we'll figure it out. <laughs> All, right. All right. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you buddy. Be, All right. If I can, I'd be happy to help.